Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, AMD's new GPU is releasing in more countries. Intel shuts down a rumor, but is it true? More info on AMD's monster APU, and your AMD GPU is getting a massive upgrade. But first, if you love keeping up with all things PC hardware, GPUs, CPUs, all that good stuff, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Melt. And if you are already subscribed, I just want to say thank you. Okay, it's news time, and if you do already follow this channel, you know that AMD's new RX 7900 GRE GPU was just released. The issue is that it was initially released in China, with no real word on the exact days that we could expect it in other countries. Of course, we did learn of the pricing, $649, and if you want to learn more about the specs, really quickly, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 instead of 20 versus the 7900 XT, a few less cores, things like that. If you want to learn more about the actual specs of the GPU, I'll have a link to that video somewhere up here, so you can check that out. But the new update here is that it's finally starting to release in other countries. Starting off, we have Australia, which already has a pre-built PC with it. Now, unfortunately, if you didn't see that last video on it, the cars themselves are releasing in China, but they're only going to be coming to other countries in the form of pre-built PCs. So as you can see right here, we have this pre-build. And as far as pricing, obviously this is really expensive, right at $3,500, but it heavily depends on what other parts you end up adding to the build. So don't really base it off of this price. As you can see down here, according to video cards, it states the GPU itself seems to be at least 66 US dollars more expensive than the cheapest RTX 4070 option, which according to that price right here, 649, it's right around what we would expect given that the RTX 4070 is 599 US dollars. So it is gonna be a little bit more than the 4070, but of course, as you saw with that video, it is at least a little bit faster. Whether it's actually worth that price difference is of course up to you. It isn't an amazing launch, you know, it isn't the best price to performance ever, but it is obviously another option. Moving on, the GPU was also found in Germany. Once again, another pre-built PC. This one is powered by an XFX 7900 GRE. And this one, you can actually see that the configuration with the 5700X is 1149 euros. One with a 12,900K is 1,849, but then one with a 7,900 XT instead of the 7,900 GRE is 2,099. So as this states, you'll ultimately be able to save 250 euros by going with this card. Once again, as I said, it's not the greatest price to performance GPU, but it's also not terrible either. If you aren't wanting to spend the extra money for 7,900 XT, this obviously gives you yet another option. And next up for today, I have a bit of an update to a story that I recently covered. For those who saw that video, you know that there was actually a moderator on the PC Games Hardware Forum, which I will go ahead and say is not a English speaking forum. So I did actually have to translate this using Google Translate. So keep that in mind if we kind of read this and it seems a little odd. But as you can see here, they stated that they learned from wholesalers that Intel will increase the price for its CPUs in the next week or two. They didn't really give any more details than that, but Shortly after that, Intel actually came out and denied it. The actual statement from Intel states, generally Intel does not comment on speculation regarding price changes to its portfolio. However, we can confirm that Intel has not sent the letter described to customers or partners and has not initiated a price change to its CPU portfolio at this time. We have no further comment to share on the matter. Now, this basically led to a ton of articles stating how what that guy said is not true, but I will at least give them some credit that they did later state that uh, it should be mentioned that in my later conversations with my sources, uh, August 1st was sometimes mentioned as the date. He stated that he finds two passages in the quote interesting. Right here it says Intel has not sent the letter described to customers or partners. He then goes on to state that he can imagine that no official letter was approved here, probably just a piece of information. It's been directly assigned to Intel from, so he, he's basically stating they say it's not official and that's 
effectively what, you know, it's not official, but yeah, they actually did do it. So he is claiming that his initial sources are still correct. You can also see down here, another quote says, and has not initiated a price change to its CPU portfolio at this time. So obviously he's trying to claim that the price increase obviously hasn't happened at this time. It's something that's coming in the future. While Intel's statement was specifically saying at this time, which is technically true, but this leak at the same time could be true based on what he's saying. Now, I will go ahead and say that Tom's Hardware and a few others did mention kind of some issues with this. They actually stated that typically when Intel does this, they don't issue, you know, a vague pricing directive to consumer CPU channels. They say that's not how Intel normally operates. Any pricing missives are typically extremely formal limited to predefined and thoroughly to the point templates and pertain to explicit product SKUs. Now, I will at least say that there is a chance when it comes to this, maybe what this person is hearing is just some talks that are happening behind the scenes at Intel. Maybe it wasn't a final declarative thing, although it sort of did sound like it. Basically, I just kind of wanted to lay out all the information here. I do know that I don't really have any kind of definitive answer, at least according to Intel, they aren't going to be raising prices across the board for their CPUs, but this initial leaker is still claiming that it is happening. And next up, I have a very interesting update regarding AMD's next-gen Ryzen 8000 Strix APUs, including that Halo APU that's set to completely redefine the discrete GPU market. Starting things off, as you can see right here, a known leaker essentially stated that Strix Point is going to have four Zen 5 cores and eight Zen 5C cores, or at least up to eight Zen 5C cores but then Strix Halo was gonna be 16 Zen 5 cores. Remember that the C cores are effectively AMD's version of Intel's efficiency cores, so it's like their big dot little design. Regardless, he then states, if you're asking, it's an eight plus eight for the Halo part. What that means is that you have eight Zen 5 cores on one chiplet and eight Zen 5 cores on another chiplet for 16 total. And Kobite Sib and Kimmy stated that Strix Halo looks like a desktop Zen 5 with a different IOD. So effectively, it looks like this monster Strix Halo APU is gonna come with a whopping 16 cores, at least for the CPU. Remember that this is an APU with an integrated graphics card, and according to the most recent leak, we're looking at a whopping 40 CUs. Don't forget that the 40 CUs is quite a bit more than the just released RX 7600. So this bad boy is set to be a monster of an APU. It'll completely destroy the low and even plenty of the mid range discrete GPUs. And honestly, like I've said before, this is something Nvidia should really be worried about. And lastly for today, if you own one of AMD's GPUs, well, specifically some ones I'll get to in just a second, let's just say you're about to get a huge upgrade. As you can see right here from Tom's Hardware, AMD announced that it has released the HIP SDK for Windows intending to democratize GPU computing. This is actually something that AMD said in the announcement themselves. You can see it's a milestone quest to democratize GPU computing. But what are they talking about? It says it right here, you no longer must choose between Team CUDA or Team HIP, as the HIP SDK will help developers make CUDA applications run on AMD's hardware. Now, you might be wondering, you know, what in the world is HIP? I thought AMD's software stack for, you know, uh, professional compute performance with the GPU was their ROCM platform, and that is correct. Think of HIP as effectively one of the APIs under the ROCM product stack. And it's actually the one that more or less is made specifically to compete with Nvidia's CUDA. So this is very important stuff. This is effectively what AMD needs to do to better compete with Nvidia's CUDA. And if you remember not too long ago, they actually announced a little bit more support for ROCM specifically in consumer GPUs. Don't forget that while ROCM has been supported in a lot of their pro GPUs, consumer GPUs are significantly cheaper. And at least for some industries, it makes a lot more economical sense to purchase those GPUs versus the professional ones. So this was a huge deal for AMD, but I'd actually argue that this one may be even bigger. As you can see right here, they state, there's always been a significant divide between developers that work with GPU accelerated applications. 
Some prefer NVIDIA's proprietary CUDA API, while others like the open source HIP API. The HIP SDK, part of AMD's ROCM platform, wants to bridge that gap, allowing developers to convert CUDA applications into C++ code that will work on NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards. It says that AMD asserts that porting a CUDA application to HIP SDK isn't challenging since CUDA and HIP are based on C++. Furthermore, the HIP SDK provides tools to help developers speed up the process, such as HIPify toolset that will convert CUDA code into portable HIP C++. Basically, this is a way for developers to be able to convert their software that supports supports CUDA to also support HIP, meaning that your AMD GPUs, including consumer GPUs, will finally have way more software to work on. And the good news doesn't stop there. As you can see down here, it says that they're still updating the compatibility list and I, there's even more good news. I'll get to that in just a second. It says 10 Radeon graphics cards between RDNA 3 and RDNA 2 are officially supported thus far. So we're looking at some Radeon Pro GPUs, but then we actually have the 7900 XTX, 7900 XT, 7600, 6950 XT, 6900 XT, 6800 XT, and 6800 non XT. All of those GPUs now support this new HIP SDK. But while that is the official list, AMD also claims, you can see down here, yeah, they say everything from high end workstation and gaming GPUs to laptop cards and even APUs will be supporting the HIP SDK. And basically though, the support for the cards is very much software dependent. For example, Blender's HIP rendering backend supports AMD GPUs going back to the Vega generation. That includes RX 5000. So depending on the software, even older GPUs may be supported. And you can see here that they're actually getting some support for laptop cards and even APUs. So if you own an AMD APU or GPU and you do, you know, some professional workloads that require GPU compute, this could be a huge change for you. Your GPU would effectively be getting a massive upgrade. So while that does it for today, I do apologize. I know I rambled quite a bit here, but that hip story especially was really interesting. Do you think this is the start of AMD finally catching up to CUDA or is it just going to be a failed attempt? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.